What is a BMX bike? It's riding in its most simplistic form. Forged in chromoly, with roots in racing. We mix it with dirt jumps meant for motocross athletes. It enables us to do amazing things. However, it offers us no protection or guarantee of survival. With the course that Red Bull Dreamline has presented this year, there's some big hits out there. The amount of speed you're gonna be flying down that mountain with and these huge gaps. And if you do come off, you know, it's gonna hurt, but with bigger jumps comes bigger risk and bigger reward. I think everybody's scared, I'm not gonna lie. Definitely intimidated. In order to do well at this event, you're gonna have to send it. I mean, you're gonna have to be taken out of your comfort zone. Looking at some of those landings are like two and three stories tall. So just the speed you're regenerating riding down the hill, like the mountain, and then you land on one of those things, like you're gonna be going at some speeds where a lot of people haven't reached that and probably a lot of people aren't gonna be comfortable with. So it's just gonna be one of those things where you're gonna have to get used to it or else you're gonna have to sit down and watch everybody else man up. We have guys coming from all over the world. We have riders from 12 countries landing in New Mexico. Corey Bowen has that signature style that nobody else has. Mike Hucker-Clark, he is having the most fun out of everybody. He just killed it. Ryan Nyquist is a BMX dirt legend. The guy wins every contest he enters. Dennis Anderson, he's kind of like the BMX Chuck Norris. He just does whatever he wants. TJ Ellis seriously does some of the most unique tricks. He goes way higher than a lot of the guys do. Kyle Baldock, he is the new BMX X Games gold medalist. Pat Casey's just a wild card. It'll be interesting to see how he does in this elite field of riders. Yo, it's, it's big, dude. Can I get a toboggan? It's gonna take some real confident riders to ride this place because it's technical, it's fast, it's big. Instead of trying to add a ton of jumps, we just built 11 massive jumps to ride it the way that these guys are used to riding. They're gonna have to be on point. There were a couple feature jumps out on the course. There was a giant shark fin, which we had had the first year at Dreamline, but this year it was about five times bigger. Secondly is the big booter jump at the bottom of the hill, which was about 32 feet long this year in probably about 10 foot tall lip and 15 foot tall landing, where a lot of guys would probably put in a difficult trick right before they made it down the rest of the course. Qualifying was definitely insane. There were so many guys out there killing it. We were at 9,600 feet. A lot of guys were having trouble breathing. We had oxygen on site, just kind of trying to keep everyone in one piece. Corey Bowen, who could potentially win the event, was going for the three look back, ended up over rotating and landing backwards. So he didn't finish the rest of qualifying. Nyquist was putting on a show for everyone. He went to do a 450 bar spin. He ended up hanging up just enough to send him over the bars. And then we later were informed that he broke his collarbone and dislocated some ribs. Coming into finals with seeing their fellow riders being injured the day before, a lot of these guys definitely had their minds in a lot of different places. Mike Hucker was one of the top contenders on the final jump. We saw him land, and then all you saw was him kind of doing cartwheels and rolling. He hit his head really hard, and that kind of took him out for the rest of the event. One of the other big contenders was Dennis Anderson. Unfortunately, altitude sickness took control, so he was out of the game, done.
loving it. It's not even feeling like a contest anymore. It's just feeling like all mates are hanging out and that's what he wanted to feel like and I'm stoked to be a part of it, you know? Amazing. This course is gnarly, like I never wrote nothing like it, so for me to land all my tricks and right away is like, I'm blessed. <laughs> really just the jumps, that's it. You just have so much time in the air that you can just do whatever you want. So a lot of those tricks I haven't ever done in a contest, so it was cool just to be able to do it and land them, so I'm soaked. All the guys were killing it throughout the whole jam. Pat Casey just pushed through. He did a 360 bar spin to double tail whip, and that was a trick that's never been done before. It was a first. Pat Casey was going 10 feet higher than all the other guys. So Pat with the well-deserved win. 